if it can do this, this is an exceptional amount of power that this thing can handle. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. Something new, newly released from DJI. This is their power station. DJI is known for their drones and cameras and stuff like that. They are now getting into the power station market. So this is gonna be their first release, the Power 1000. They also have a smaller one that's right around 500. This will be exciting just to see, you know, what this thing's all about. I did also get this carry case with a few cables that you can directly charge drone batteries on and a few other peripherals. See how this performs. I'm going to put on a bunch of loads on it, see what it can handle, you know, see how easy it is to use. Let's get started with the DJI Power 1000 power station. Here is the box. I assume this is not going to be like the production box. This is just like a pre-production guy here. So I just opened it up. I thought it was going to be in maybe a better looking um, box, but it's just like this cardboard box. So we'll see how it comes out when it's released to the public, which should be soon. Anyway, opening the box up and here's what you get. So we have a wall cable. This is a US wall cable. So, you know, it's that 110 really thick computer cable basically that you'd you know, plug into the back of your power supply and your computer. Little instruction manual. A couple more compartments. Looks like nothing's in there. Let's just take this whole top off. Now, this is the first time I've been digging into this. I did just open the box, like I was saying, to see if it came with an internal box. Let's get this bad boy out. <laughs> Not that easy to take out. Jeez. That was kind of difficult. So their infamous white smoked packaging. This is going to be kind of interesting. Wow. Same kind of finish that DJI drones are known for, for, even like the same colors and everything. As you can see, we have two 110 outlet. We have our AC on button here, 24 watt USB A ports, and then two 140 watt. Wow. USB-C ports. So a lot of you guys that are into DJI drones might be interested in getting one of these because you are DJI drone fans. This is interesting right here. They actually have a physical kind of like heavy lifting load button. So you have your nominal like 600 watt basically for longevity. And then if you really wanted to push this thing to its max and you needed that power, you can click that button up to 1200 watts and that gives you that ability to push it of course with power stations and batteries in general the harder you push batteries the less longevity they're going to have let me just take off this little screen protector here so very well protected just like all of their other products let's see what this is like input it looks like it's right on the front that's interesting that they chose to do that i would have thought it would have been on the side or something that's the port that this cable that we got in the box just plugs right into 100 to 120 volts ac 50 to 60 hertz and the doors are very similar to like a door on their drone that is for like a memory card slot same kind of material same kind of little lanyard thing they have going here and it's good to see though that they do close up pretty tight not going to be anything waterproof here because this is kind of a hard plastic there's no seals on it or anything but at least it's going to keep the dust out and mist or spray or something same thing goes for these guys and check these out sdc ports and these are the ports we're going to be using with these cables they sent me in this bag we're going to open that up in just a second plug right in there and then they have sp specific hookups for certain kinds of drones two of those ports there looks like you don't have to switch that on this is going to be the power button right here on top and the construction it's just so like drone-esque construction hex screws here everything is just the fit and finish is amazing not seeing any wireless charging on top see that dji right on the top there and i didn't even see these let's see what this is all about nothing in there they're just little blocks of foam anyway before i turn this thing on and open this bag here let's spin this bad boy around see what we have big vent and this is looking more and more like drone vents this is so cool these are plastic 
And then inside there, there's a screen with a big old fan circular opening there. And we have all the information here. This is the Power 1000 model, 2000 watts max. So you do have a 2000 watt capability to peak at. Rated capacity, we have 20 AH and 1024 watt hours. Basically a one kilowatt battery, right? Continuing on, back completely nice and clean there. Nothing going on on the back. And then the side, now that's kind of interesting. UNC quarter inch 20, basically threads, two of them right there on the right side for some accessories. Awesome, man, let's just boot this thing up. First power on ever. Just clicking and holding this button. And it sounds like a drone as well. That's pretty cool, man. Gives you that bloop. Sending it at 55% charge. That's how you want to store these batteries. Again, guys, this is going to be a LifePo battery. So lithium iron phosphate. And with anything lithium, you want to keep them stored at around 55, 60%. Especially with the older lithium technology. This is the newer technology that's way safer. Menu is very clear, very bright. You can probably see that on my hat cam. You can't normally see it this bright on a hat cam, even with some glare. I'm gonna try to get into the glare there a bit. And you can see how it's very, very visible. Let's just click a few buttons and then we'll bust out some stuff in this bag and see how everything works. Tapping once, I have two green lights here. That means these two AC outlets are active, 50 Hertz icon up here and it looks like it is now draining the battery and then really no other buttons except for this one and nothing changes on the screen when i manually switch this left and right there's no other buttons to turn anything else on it's just going to automatically be on when you're plugging stuff in turning off let's see if we just hold in power yep and it sounds just the same so no click let go and click and hold on this one it's just press long press to power off and on okay unlike their drones where remember you click click and hold if you do click it once you can turn the display off save some power tap it again display comes on that should be sleeping as well if there's no use for a while let's open this bad boy up so this was an extra package dji sent me and we have a parts and components cable and check it out right here it says mavic 3 if we just plug directly into one of these SDC slots, right? Just like that. Nice and sturdy input there. Then we can slap our Mavic 3 battery, just a single battery right on here. Also got a cigarette lighter adapter charger. Let's take this out of the box really quick, see what this is all about. I'm not sure they needed to lock it in that good, but anyway, there we go. <laughs> This is a combo adapter. It's got like a cigarette lighter and then it also has SDC power cable 12 to 24 volt. So it's gonna go into one of these same slots. We're just plugging it right in here. XT60 connector right there, awesome. And last thing in here, this is like a three foot cable. It's got a cigarette lighter on that side. And this is gonna plug right in here since it comes with this combo. There's the carry bag, and then one more of these STC connectors. This one is for the Air 3. You can see it's just a little bit of a more of a slim line. It says DJI Air 3. So what they're gonna have, guys, is they're gonna have connectors for all of their different drones, you name it. Um, I'm not sure if they're all released yet, but there's gonna be the full selection of cables you can get for each drone and each kind of battery pack. Check this out, the carry bag. Elastic pockets here. This is just a vent. This is not a pocket that opens up. And then we have all of this kind of a dust proof, water resistant coating. Remember like DJI always does on their zippers. Pretty much running just like the rest of their bags. This is a good addition. We have a stitched in really grippy soft rubber here. That's going to be a great kind of a skid pad here. So you're not like really scratching up the bottom of this. We got one on each side there. Looks like you're gonna be able to leave this thing in the bag and just open the vents up and run it. Coming over to the back, aside from the handles here, check out this gigantic pocket. So this is what you're probably gonna store all of your cables, like all these things in, right? You're just gonna be popping those bad boys in there. 
Looks like it expands pretty wide, so you could probably fit some drone batteries in there. No shoulder strap, but it's got a pretty heavy duty handle here that Velcros up just like that for carrying. A little flap here that's actually sewn into the bottom. I'm thinking this thing just pushes down for the bottom to keep it kind of flat and the bottom of it padded. So let's put this thing in here. And this is not that heavy, guys. And DJI is pretty good with their battery density. So it's probably gonna be quite a bit lighter than other, you know, 1000 kilowatt hour. It does feel pretty light. I mean, that's like 20 pounds or less. So nice baggy. And that's the best bag I've ever seen for a power station, guys. I have never seen a power station to have a bag that's this quality. So if you wanna operate this thing in the field, all you do is flip this up, unzip these guys, tuck them into this little elastic pocket so that they don't flip up and block your airflow. Check that out, we have a really nice pocket here. That's gonna let the air flow through the entire bag. So they thought about this and they did make sure that it was gonna be able to cool itself. Look at that big old fan in there. So that sucker is not gonna overheat, that's awesome. I do kinda like how this flap just kinda hangs down because if it does start to sprinkle, you're gonna have all your stuff plugged in here and this is gonna be kind of like a little, kind of a little awning, right? So if it does start to sprinkle on it, at least it's not gonna get into all of your ports and stuff. Very good job at engineering this bag, DJI. The only other thing I'm concerned about is charging with a solar panel. They do have this little picture here on the instruction manual that shows an extra adapter they sell. So if you have a solar panel that is not, is not over 24 volts, I don't see why you couldn't just plug it in here where the lighter adapter goes and go ahead and charge it with a solar panel as long as you're not going over that 24 volts. We're gonna try that as well because I think I do have a few solar panels that have this XT60 type of connector. I didn't even notice this. The SDC ports actually have the top one is standard and the bottom one says light on it. So one is probably a higher output and input and then one is probably gonna be a lower so guys first things first is i'm gonna get this thing charged up and we're gonna we're gonna do tests in three different ways to charge this we're gonna try to quickly just do a test in the car see how that works we're gonna do a test with a solar panel just gonna try to plug one right in here and then the last way i'm gonna charge it and i'm gonna top it off is just bringing it into the house and seeing how fast it just charges straight off the home power all right guys, so for the first charging test, I have a, I believe this is a 200 watt solar panel. If you check out this adapter, it has an XT60 option right there. So we'll be able to plug in. I'm just gonna plug it into the top SDC right there. And let's go ahead and plug in with the power station off. Wow, so immediately I get a green light here. So we are charging, check that out guys. Input, we've got, 100 watts and that's unfortunately i think with this device here 100 watts maximum so if you did want to charge over 100 watts with your solar you're going to want to get this little doodad here that plugs into the sdc slot and that should give you a higher input because we're limited with this guy here to just 99 watts as you can see it's not changing anywhere from 99 watts on the screen but good to know that if you're in a pinch, you can use up to, you know, a 100 watt solar panel. Again, these are 200 watts, this solar panel here. So at least we know that you can output more power, but this device here is just gonna limit the input to 99 watts. Some power stations don't have this. This is great. It has a time that it thinks it's gonna be charged at that input of wattage on the solar. So that's great to have it on the power station. It thinks it's gonna take five hours to fully charge this power station from 55% cent percent to 100% at 99 watts of input. This is really interesting up here. It's saying the input from that top SDC port is 53.36 volts. I didn't think those solar panels were that high voltage let me try the light port 53 volts from both of these ports that's interesting because this says you don't want to go above 24 volts but that might just be for 
this guy here. Test number two. We are going to be plugging this into the car here. I don't know if they engineered it like this or not, but this is great because you use the strap, the handle strap to carry it. Check this out. Once you Velcro that up, it holds the flap open. I don't know if that was intended or not, but that's a great little feature. I mean, it kind of blocks the ports with these straps, but you can work around them. Plugged into the car there. And let's see what we get. All right, starting to see some action on the input. Awesome. Over here, we do have a little different icon there. That's interesting because it's still showing like 53 volts for some reason. I don't know what that's all about. Unless there's some kind of transformer in here upping the voltage, but check that out. It's still saying 53 and my truck is maxing out at about 94 watts. Same thing, it's showing about five hours because this whole assembly is only able to charge member at 100 watts so it's great to know that these sdc ports are both ways they can output and input power let's see what we get out of this just using the ac input it might have been nice to have this port on the side on one of these sides or the back it gets kind of cluttered here when you're also plugging something like this in here but let's just see what it does all right i imagine it's going to charge pretty quick because this is a pretty thick cable 108 minutes at just about 500 watts maximum charge input. Whoa, it just went down a bit. 62 minutes, hmm, this is interesting. Okay, wow, okay, check this out. Kind of got that battery going, check it out now. We're at 727 watts input. Looks like 51 minutes. So it's gonna be pretty quick. Looks like an hour to half charge it and then possibly two hours to do a full charge. So half of what I thought once this battery started conditioning itself and I was able to take more of an input. So I'm gonna time it here and I'm also gonna monitor this input and I'll let you guys know if it actually goes up a little bit. All right guys, check it out. We're just about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes into this charge and look how things have changed. We're now getting a input of 974 watts. It seemed like once the battery was kind of conditioned and warmed up maybe, that's what seemed to kick in that higher wattage. We're already at 77% and we only have 24 minutes left to charge. So definitely is going to charge faster than I thought it was. That's awesome. And I literally hear nothing coming out of the unit here. Super low hum. Like I can't even hear it unless I get my ear right up against this. So extremely efficient. And that's a huge factor for a lot of people that want a power station and they want it to be running while they're sleeping, if they're camping or something. Something with the battery management system is sensing what it needs to charge at. And look at that, so it just dropped. It looks like it's gonna go up and down pertaining to condition of that battery and trying to you know, keep that battery. 50 minute timer just went off on my phone and let's see what we got here. So we dropped down to 508 watts on the charge input. It's been actually at one minute and 99% left for seven minutes now. Looks like just like other power stations, it's gonna need to have some time to top off and kind of balance all those batteries out. I'm gonna start the timer again and see just exactly how long it takes to get to 100%. We are donezo. So basically that was pretty close actually. Better than most. That took another four minutes to get to 100%. You can see how it just shut off the input. It says full here and we are at 100%. No more charging going on. I've seen power stations that needed to be left on the charger for hours after they reached 99%. Looks like the software is pretty good, pretty accurate already, and this thing is just being released, so I'm sure with updates it'll get better. Also, usually these power stations, once they're power cycled a little bit, they usually get more accurate after a few charges. All right, guys, so here's the test bed all set up. We have our water kettle to boil water with just a little over one liter of water in it toaster with two pieces of uncooked toast in there, Mavic 3 plug, and our Air 3 plug, Samsung smartwatch here, the two batteries for the Air and the Mavic 3. This is the new Avada charge block here. So again, if you're gonna keep the bag on the power station, you definitely wanna open these cooling ports, yeah? I don't know what it's gonna do if <laughs> you left those closed. It'd probably overheat and shut down before you cause any damage. Plug in my watch real quick, regular USB-Cs, and let's make sure the watch can charge. There we go. We can look at the output here. We're only 
uh, pulling two watts of power. Next up, the Avada 2. This is up on my channel if you're interested in drones and stuff. Don't miss my in-depth review series going on right now on the channel. I'll have a card pop up here. It'll also be in the description. Let's plug into the USB-C that says a max of 140. And this guy's going to click on... Yes, it's giving it a fast charge, nice. 40 watts is better than the slow charge it would normally get. This is doing a fast blink, so we're getting, at least we're getting 40 watts into that battery. Plugging in, I see the green light come on there, and we are charging. Awesome, wow, that's really shooting up. So these ports are really gonna give you some crazy output. Holy smoke, so that's outputting, that just jumped to 160, still going up about 165, 160. So we're getting like a 120 more watts just out of that one for the Mavic 3 battery. Unplug this guy in, just like that. There we go, battery's initializing and we're getting a fast charge watching on the screen here. And my goodness, that bad boy is going up to the 270 mark. Nice. So with all this little cluster of stuff right here, we're drawing 270 watts. And it is doing a pretty quick charge on all of the drone batteries. Okay, now we want to start running some of these high draw items. You're just going to click this on. We're going to see some blue light indicating it's on. Pop over here real quick and look at that. So I do have this switch set to the 1200 watt. So this is the highest output it can be. Remember, it has that manual switch. About 1370, starting to hear our water boil. This is gonna push it over its maximum of 2000 watts, but it's always good to see what happens and how power stations handle this. So this is probably gonna draw another 1000 watts about. So, wow. Now I'm hearing the fan come on. Right here, I'm hearing it. I'm feeling a little bit of hot air coming out of there. It's still not that loud. Pulling 2270, 2270 watts. So let's let it kind of sit here for a minute and see if it can do all this stuff without shutting off. If it can do this, this is an exceptional amount of power that this thing can handle. And the great thing about this is if it can handle it, I'm not gonna speak too soon, is in these heavy lifting modes, that's great that it can do redundant devices like heating elements, because these don't really have computers on them that are sensitive, so these ones do, sort of. It's still pushing it, my goodness, I can't believe this. I thought it would definitely clip at this much power, but it's just pulling through, amazing. So I do want to stay here until this thing is has a rolling boil, and it's probably going to take a couple of minutes. Toast is already halfway done, we've got about 40 seconds left on the toast. You can see how fast it's pulling that power down though, now we're, we're pulling it down and we're at 88%. And it says that this draw, it's only gonna last 21 minutes. So keep that in mind. If you're drawing this much power, you are gonna suck the power out of the battery. Toast is almost done. 86%. We've got 10 seconds left on the toast. Just monitoring everything to make sure we catch it if it pops off. There we go, toast is done. I got a nice crust on there. As you can see, the wattage dropped down to 1360. Everything here still charging, did not interrupt any of that. And we're at 84%. Go ahead and take a bite of this toast while waiting. Awesome. So all we're doing now guys is waiting for the water to boil. And this really is just what I like to do is just put it in real world situations. Say you take this thing camping, you have it in an RV for extra power, whatever your case may be, you're in the field, you have, you're using it to charge your drone battery doing a project, drone filming or whatever. 
at least you know you can bust out this power station and run these other items off of it. You know what I mean? It's not just a drone uh, charging station. Remember, they also have the smaller version too if this one's too big for you. But it does all these other things and it seems to be really dang good at it. Better than I thought it would be kicking it over 2000 watts for that long. And it's still going. We're still waiting for this water to boil. Being that it didn't clip off drawing over 2000 watts, I doubt it's going to clip off now. So I'm just going to kind of concentrate on getting this, this water boiled here. It should be almost done. Yeah, we're just, just finishing up the water. There we go. Rolling boil. Nice. Let's wait for that to clip off. It should have an auto clip off on the water when it's done. Come on now, there we go. So there you go, water is boiled. We can do whatever we want, coffee, tea, hot cocoa when you're camping. And what is our percentage? We're at 78% power. So that's what you can expect, guys. We're still drawing 245 watts approximately. And I'm still charging all of my DC electronics. I did wanna put my ice cold cooler. I have like a dual zone cooler. I usually like to take camping a big boy. And I just realized that I can't run my cooler on this thing without some kind of special adapters because there is no lighter adapter output and my cooler has one of those dc lighter adapter plugs to draw power it also has an ac so i could run it off of the ac and kind of have that conversion loss but usually on stuff that can run off a of dc you don't want to do that because you're just ghosting unnecessary power and losing unnecessary power. So I guess this will kind of get us into the final pros and cons of the DJI Power 1000 power station. Let's talk about some of the things it can't do. No DC output for a lighter plug. You could plug in an adapter to one of these USB-Cs out to a female lighter adapter plug, plug in your cooler or whatever. So that would remedy that. So that's not impossible. Up on the top, no wireless charging. I would assume that the next generation of this, uh, they may have wireless charging on the top. Speaking of wireless, there is no wireless or Bluetooth connectivity at all. Zero connectivity on this first generation. So those are two things that I hope they kind of work on for the next generation series two of these things. Let's talk about that power delivery. So phenomenal, uh, exceeded all my expectations. And that's what this thing is mainly for, right? Is to output power when you need it in all different sorts of ways. And it does that very well. The off and on tones are cool. It reminds me of the drone tones. You guys that are have drones are gonna kind of be familiar and kind of like that, I think. It only has two AC outputs. Would have been nice if they could have squeezed maybe four in here somehow. The charging was great. I mean, charging from solar panel, car, cigarette lighter adapter to household power Household power was phenomenal. I mean, it charged all the way up to a thousand watts. It looked like it was gonna fluctuate depending on like the battery. It seemed like the software was doing really good at protecting the battery there. All in all though, guys, this thing does what it's supposed to do. Just those couple of little shortcomings that I'd like to see in the next generation. Let's talk about this bag. This bag is phenomenal. I know it's just a bag, but it's not just a bag. It's a really good bag. It has a lot of features that you can tell have been engineered just to really work well if it was completely silent and you're using some high draw items that weren't in the same room as this maybe you'd hear a little bit of air coming out but this is one of the quietest power stations i have ever heard all in all i think dji did a really good job on this first generation power station good on you dji you did a pretty good job my contact at dji they said that this is going to be really cheap on the initial release they're going like in the 600 dollars range on the thousand watt so that's pretty darn good and then their 500 watt is even of course like half that price if you're a drone enthusiast or you like dji products in general you may want to pick this up sooner than later because it sounds like they're having a huge discounted price when it first it's first release you can check that down in the description as well 
to check that out and see how much they cost. Anyway guys, really enjoyed testing this thing out. Definitely a new feat of engineering for DJI. I'm not like a DJI fanboy or anything, but the proof is in the pudding. I mean, they make good products, they make quality products. And I'm not just saying that. I've reviewed a lot of their drones. They've come a long way. They're catching up with stuff like GoPro, almost leapfrogging GoPro, and now they're getting into the power station. So I'd really like to see them succeed here and see, th see what they can do in this new kind of tech. And anyway, hey guys, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.